Hi guys. Um, usually I use a different recording tool, but it's been crashing on me and I've read this passage like over and over. So you will not be seeing my, my face for this. Um, I am going to start by just doing a read aloud. Um, and I do want to go back and say I did find out when people say that awful den that is like um in another country i think it was like in europe or london you know england that type of thing that uh, it is pronounced that awful den and that means that awful noise so that being said this is going to be phantom toll booth act two scene one part two oh there are a number of ways to get to digitopolis if you know how to follow directions, just take a look at the sign at the fork in the road. Though, why would you ever want to go there? I'll never know. We want to talk to the mathematician about the release of the princess's rhyme and reason. Rhyme and reason? I remember them very nice girls, but a little too quiet for my taste. In fact, I've been meaning to send them something that Dine brought home by mistake, and which I have absolutely no use for. He rummages through his wagon, which means he's looking through his wagon. Ah, here it is. Or, or maybe you'd like it for yourself. And he hands my little package. What is it? The sounds of laughter. They are so unpleasant to hear, it's almost unbearable. All those giggles and snickers, and happy shouts of joy. I don't know what Dine was thinking when he collected them. Here, take them to the princesses or keep them for yourself. I don't care. Well, time to move on. Goodbye now. Good luck. He has shut the wagon and is now, um, and by now, and he gets in. Loud noises begin to erupt as he pulls the wagon off stage. He being Dine. Milo calls after them, but wait, the fork in the road. You didn't tell it where it. It's too late. They can't hear a thing. I could use a fork of my own at the moment and a knife and a spoon to go with it. All of a sudden, I feel very hungry. So do I, but there's no use see, thinking about it. We won't be, there won't be anything to eat until we reach Digitopolis. And they get into the car. Humbug rubs his stomach. Well, the sooner the better, I say. A sign appears, suddenly appears. A strange voice from nowhere. But which way will you get there sooner? That is the question. Did you hear something? Look, the fork in the road. A signpost to Digitopolis. They read the sign. Let's travel by miles. It's shorter. Let's travel by half inches. It's quicker. But which road should we take? It must make a difference. You think so? Well, I'm not sure, but he could be right. On the other hand, he could also be wrong. Does it make a difference or not? Yes, indeed. Indeed it does. Certainly. My yes, it does make a difference. Okay. Suddenly this new character appears, and I'm going to, this word right here, that's his name. This is how it's pronounced. Dodecahedron. 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 Okay. So I already know I'm going to mess up saying that. But the dodecahedron appears. A 12-sided figure with a different face on each side. And all of the edges labeled with small letters. And all the angles are labeled with large letters. He wears a beret and peers at the others with a serious face. He doffs his cap and recites. So just before I tell you what he says, um, I'm going to call him the Doty. And this is kind of just what it looks like. Sometimes there are special dice that you play. Um, like certain games. Like maybe I don't know, maybe Dungeons and Dragons or some of those other games. But that's what it looks like. All right, back to our work. So the Doty has this little saying. My angles are many, my sides are not few. I'm the Doty, who are you? What's a Doty? 
turning, he turns around slowly. See for yourself. A doty is a mathematical shape with 12 faces. All his faces appear as he turns, each face with a different expression. He points them out. I usually use one at a time. It saves wear and tear. What are you called? Which is a kind of a weird thing to ask somebody. What are you called? You would say, like, what is your name? Who are you? Milo. That's an odd name. Changing his smiling face to a frowning one. And you have only one face. Milo making sure it's still there. He's like touching his face. Is that bad? Stody, you'll soon wear it out for using it for everything. Is everyone with one face called a Milo? Oh no, some are called Billy or Jeffrey or Sally or Lisa or lots of other things. How confusing. Here, everything's called exactly what it is. Triangles are called tri triangles. The circles are called circles, and even the same numbers have the same name. Can you imagine what would happen if we named all of our twos Billy or Jeffrey or Sally or Lisa or lots of other things? You would have to say Robert plus John equals four. And if the fours were named Albert, things would be hopeless. I never thought of it that way. Okay, then I suggest you begin at once for, for Digitopolis. Everything is quite precise. Then perhaps you can help us decide which road to take. Oh, he's happily says, by all means, there's nothing to it. As he talks, the three others try to solve the problem on a large blackboard that is wheeled on stage for the occasion. So this is the math problem he's been saying. Now a large, now a small car carrying three people at 30 miles an hour for 10 minutes along road five, a road five miles long at 11.35 in the morning starts at the same time, oh my gosh, as three people who have been traveling in a little automobile at 20 miles an hour for 15 minutes on another road exactly twice as long as half the distance of the other while a dog, a bug, and a boy travel equal distance in the same time or in the same distance in which time along the third road in mid-October and then which one arrives first and which is the best way to go. Oh, I, so he's just telling, like making this way more complicated than what it is. Humbug says 17. Uh, I'm not sure, but you'll have to do better than that. I'm not very good at problems. What a shame. They're so, so very useful. Why did you know that if a beaver two feet long with a tail, a foot and a, and a half long can build a dam, oh, a tail, a foot and a half long can build a dam 12 feet high and six feet wide in two days. All you would need to build a boulder dam is a beaver 68 feet long and with a 51 foot tail. Okay, I'm gonna stop for now because that's making my brain hurt a little bit. This Doty character is all about story problems and word riddles. Um, so I'm gonna stop for now and I will be back with some more passages. <laughs> 